guys and welcome to a day from Sapporo, Japan. Today we are at Pirika Kotan Sapporo, which is an Ainu museum. We're going to go inside and we're going to look at some exhibitions about Ainu culture. So Ainu are the native original inhabitants of Hokkaido. So let's go have a look. So we're inside the museum now and we can see lots of different um, artifacts from the Ainu culture. So for example, there are some carvings, so some wood carvings that have been done. And next we're going to head into the exhibition room right behind me here. I can see some traditional Ainu clothing, so let's go have a look. <laughs> but the designs on the traditional clothing are so pretty. It's so interesting to look at. Just look at this one for example, wow. And inside the exhibition room, there's also a lot of tools that they used to use. So the Ainu people used to used to like cook food and also for hunting. So, wow, there's actually some snowshoes here. You can tell that the Ainu used to live in Hokkaido since they had to have snowshoes. But, wow. So many different tools. It's actually quite interesting to look into the Ainu culture here in Hokkaido. So in Australia, where I'm from, we have the Aborigine culture. And it's similar in some ways because the Ainu are the original inhabitants. And so behind here is a lot of different cooking utensils. So they have some bowls and oh, a dipper for porridge. So they must have used to eat porridge. There's also aprons and they have a sword strap so they must have used to have really large swords. And these here are women's headbands. So the women, they used to wear headbands around their head like this. But look at the beautiful designs. And beside me now we have like a traditional, I, I don't know what you call it, it kind of looks like a Japanese like kimono or, in a way but it's not similar like shape but the traditional clothing here is actually made from um, tree bark like I don't know how they've done it but they've actually got bark and they've woven it into this clothing piece of clothing and it seems like to keep themselves warm um, they've used fur so animal furs so they have boots to keep their feet warm made from deer leather wow Oh, look at this. It looks like a crossbow. That's a really awesome looking crossbow there. So they did most of their hunting um, just using their own tools and traps. In front of that, there's actually a trap to catch a marten. Like, I don't know what a marten is. It's like some sort of small animal by the looks of it. I'm kind of curious how it works. Like, I, I wonder if it gets crushed by the stone. I, I don't know how it works, but wow. Like, there's some very interesting design traps that they've used. And what else do we have? Oh, we have some beautiful knives here. So the smaller knives apparently were given to Ainu women by Ainu men. Yeah, some of the designs on there are gorgeous. Like, it's amazing how they managed to get those designs into the wood. And what else do we have? Oh, we have... What is this? Oh, I think it is a, it's a swinging crib. So it's like a baby crib. So families must have put their babies on this and shook them so they could go to sleep. So I guess these days we have the cribs that rock by themselves, but this is what they had. They must have tied them from the roof of their homes and just like pushed it a little bit so the baby could gently fall to sleep. I just found a water bottle that's made out of I think it's like the insides of a deer and they've dried it out and they've actually turned it into a way to store water. But that's pretty impressive. I'm not quite sure exactly how they've done it because the explanation only says a water bag. But in Ainu language, it's called a kuyo. kuyo. So that's pretty interesting. And apparently what we just looked at right now is a huge porridge bowl. 
So they must have really liked porridge, but it's, they've put it in this big bowl. And wow, I just found some waterproof clothing. So I guess like the Ainu, they lived here in Hokkaido, but some of the Ainu population also lived in Saharin, so which is kind of close, like Russia, it's in Russia. And I guess because it was so cold and they had to protect themselves from the snow. So this clothing is actually waterproof since it's made from the scales of salmon. But, wow, that's so clever how they put it together. I hope they waited for it to dry out for a long time, otherwise I'm sure it would have stunk. And this here, so this was used to weave like mats that, they're, that the Ainu kept in their homes, like this one here. And here in front of me, there is a needle case. So it's where the women used to keep their needles after they finished sewing. And in Ainu language, it's called chishipo. You can also take a photo like you're inside an Ainu house. So this is what it looks like inside. So now we're standing outside of the museum and outside in the garden area there's actually some traditional Ainu houses that you can walk inside. So I just want to show you guys inside now. So this here is called Poro Chise and in Ainu language this actually means big house. And it's made out of thatch so it's made out of a sort of Japanese grass. Um, and it's thatched together after it's been dried out to make quite a warm house because the Ainu have to live in such cold temperatures here in Hokkaido. So let's go have a look inside. It looks really dark inside. Whoa. Wow. Ooh. Oh, it smells. It smells like wood and fire inside. But so obviously the house isn't as warm for the modern day person as it was for the Ainu back in the day because if you saw in the corner there's actually a gas heater. But I can understand how this place would be able to keep the warmth in quite well because these thatch walls are actually very very thick. And the smell is amazing in here. Like fresh wood smell. Like I would be very happy living in a house like this. Although I would want the gas heater as well. So let's have a look what else is outside here in the garden. So that was one day from Sapporo, Japan. And we're at Pirika Kotan. And if you want to see Ainu culture, if you're interested in Ainu culture, it's very easy just to get here by bus from Sapporo. So definitely check it out and you can see traditional Ainu homes, traditional Ainu artifacts and you can look at the beautiful clothing with the gorgeous patterns in there. But thank you for watching guys!